Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name, increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and bring forth in us the fruit of good works. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. Lord, you know. Remember me and visit me and bring down retribution for me on my persecutors. In your forbearance, do not take me away. Know that on your account I suffer insult. Your words were found and I ate them and your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart, for I am called by your name, O Lord, God of hosts. I did not sit in the company of merrymakers, nor did I rejoice. Under the weight of your hand I sat alone, for you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unceasing, my wound incurable, refusing to be healed? 
Truly, you are to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that fail. Therefore, thus says the Lord, If you turn back, I will take you back, and you shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious and not what is worthless, you shall serve as my mouth. It is they who will turn to you, not you who will turn to them. And I will make you to this people a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail over you. For I am with you to save you and deliver you, says the Lord. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked and redeem you from the grasp of the ruthless. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, So far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil but overcome evil with good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. For you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly I tell you, There are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the meditations of my heart And the words of my mouth be acceptable to you, O God, and a blessing to your people. One year ago, last Friday, one of my dearest friends lost her woman child of a daughter. One week she was with us in church, and the next week she was gone. It sent shockwaves through our parish, and I struggled to console the inconsolable, while preparing for the homily of a lifetime, the one you give at the funeral of your beloved friend's child. A decade ago, I'd suffered a somewhat similar loss, and the echoes of my own grief and horror were also ringing loud, louder than they had in a long time. The situation bordered on the impossible. That is the week I found Lauren Daigle's song, Rescue. I listen to contemporary music while I'm driving in the car, and this week, last year, I was listening to Rescue. 20 times a day, the words washing me over, washing over me as an anguished plea. You are not hidden. There's never been a moment that you were forgotten. You are not hopeless, though you may have been broken, your innocence stolen. God's grace and the support of others held me through the delivery of that homily to a packed church and delivered me into a calm where I could support my friend, whose ongoing struggle with grief continues particularly acute right now on this first anniversary. I haven't really listened to Rescue since that time, but it played on the radio the other day and I realized with jagged and painful clarity that momentarily left me breathless that those lyrics don't apply to one family's trauma anymore. They cry for all of us as we navigate this surreal pandemic moment. I could never have imagined it. We have so much more than death to be traumatized by. There's financial crisis and life-threatening illness, loneliness, workplaces turned dangerous, elders in painful isolation, dreams and goals on hope on hold, children struggling to learn, and parents and teachers struggling to teach, and a sudden weird fearfulness in the commonplace, 
the dentist's office, the shopping mall, the gym. We're afraid to leave the house and everybody is carrying a cross, it seems. As a wise woman I know told me lately, it's the first time she can remember that the whole world is grieving. I hear your whisper, the song goes. I hear your SOS. And I will send out an army to find you in the middle of the darkest night. Given that we're entering the seventh month of a breathtaking crisis, Jesus is making some puzzling demands, it seems to me. Who do you say that I am last week? Are you going to follow me to Golgotha this week? Last week's question meant everything. Who is he and whose are you? In a world full of danger, you'll either be entirely safe or entirely at risk depending on your answer. And if you are his, then what are you doing with the cross that life has laid on you? What we're doing is kind of complaining. We are Jeremiah, crying out in hurt confusion. Why is my pain unceasing and my wound incurable? God gives the expected answer. I am with you to save you and deliver you. But for some reason, we don't feel comforted. We can't focus on a savior when we're drowning in grief and there is no room for suffering at the hands of the chief priests and scribes right now. Sorry, Jesus. We're fraying around the edges, full up, done with it, as my dentist said while examining my mouth recently. I will rescue you, the song continues, because there is no distance that cannot be covered over and over. You're not defenseless. I'll be your shelter. I'll be your armor. I hear you whisper underneath your breath. I hear you whisper, you have nothing left. I think it's possible that we may be too jacked up on adrenaline right now to realize that we've already been rescued from this mess. There's no method in our anxiety and depression because we're forgetting the next parts of the story. Yes, carrying a cross will lead to the hill of execution on Good Friday, but following Jesus pretty shortly is going to lead us to the extraordinary moment of transfiguration when God clearly tells us to listen to him. And most importantly, it's going to lead to his resurrection on that glorious Easter morning. We must follow something or someone when we're in the dark, right? Entering into month seven with your reserves low and your tolerance nearing an end, now is the time to decide. Who is it going to be? The guys on the news? Your intuition? All the tools at your disposal to help you feel like you're in control? Now, amid all this pain, who is he and will you follow? Here's the thing, my very beloved brothers and sisters whose faces I miss so much. If he's your creator, if his spirit surrounds and protects you every single moment, if he knows every hair on your head and every thought in your brain, if he came down into messy humanity to sacrifice himself for you, if he will carry you when you cannot walk and raise you after your death, what do you have to fear and why are you stressed out? I will send out an army to find you in the middle of the darkest night, the songwriter concludes. 
I will never stop marching to reach you in the middle of the hardest fight because it's true. I will rescue you. To follow Jesus now in the middle of this hardest fight is the challenge of our lifetime. History is calling on us to rise to the occasion. You are going to remember who he is and that you can trust him. He indeed hears, and you know it because he's shown up for you before. And there's never been a moment that you were forgotten, no matter what emotions you feel. You are not now or ever hopeless, no matter how many burdens weigh you down. Cradled in his arms of rescue, you will not be overcome because he'll lift you on the wings of his love and there you'll be able to take your spiritual walk to new places follow Jesus with all your heart right now and you'll receive the strength to hold fast to what is good in your life love with great affection live in peace Rejoice in hope. Be patient in your suffering and persevere in prayer. For as Paul reminds us, the night is far gone and the day is near. Hope comes with the morning. God bless you and I love and miss you. Amen. And now let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, have mercy. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and truth and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them 
and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy. Guide us in the process of discerning a new rector for our parish. Give us wisdom and courage to find a caring pastor for our people to serve you and a world in need. Lord, in your mercy. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in mod body, mind, or spirit. Remembering Karen, Michael, Colleen, Earl, Barbara, for all those impacted by the fires throughout the West and the hurricanes in the Gulf. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them to the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Let us pray for all the men and women in the uniformed and armed services and their families. Give us strength and hope to heal our country in pain from injustice and racism. Pray for all afflicted with the coronavirus and those who care for the afflicted. Pray also for those whose needed medical care has been deferred because of the pandemic. Bring comfort to those in economic trouble because of the pandemic and those facing difficulty from the emotional impact of social distancing and loved ones in quarantine. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the parish of St. John the Baptist in Glendale. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Church of South India. We also pray for our companion diocese in Navajo land and our companion parish and school, St. Paul's in Haiti. For All Saints Episcopal Day School, our students, teachers, administrators, and support staff. For all who are visiting us today, may you find our community a place of welcome and spiritual nourishment. We commend to your mercy all who have died, remembering Libby, Peter, and John, that your will for them may be fulfilled. We pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. Good morning. Welcome to worship at All Saints Phoenix online. We're glad you found us today. I'm Pastor Emily Finn, 
the Associate Rector for Mission and Family Ministries. Um, I just have a few announcements to bring, into, bring to your attention today. Uh, next week, we will be letting our Episcopal Diocese bring you the Sunday service. So on Sunday, September 6th, the 9 a.m. service will be on the Diocesan YouTube channel. And there are details about this in the eBlast and on our website. Um, there will also be a diocesan-wide Zoom coffee hour with the bishop following the service. So look for a special email with the Zoom link for that service. Um, and if you'd like to attend that and you haven't signed up for our eBlast, now would be at the time to uh, send Nanette an email. Also, we are wrapping up our special drive to support our children, youth, and family ministries this week. So your check or online donation will enable us to keep our young people engaged in active ministry, which is even more important now than ever during this time of COVID. So we thank you in advance for your generosity. And all the information about how to donate is on our website, our Facebook page, and our weekly e-blast. Um, our children and youth serve all saints in a variety of ways, traditionally. They serve as lectors, greeters, ushers, choristers, choir scholars, outreach and hospitality volunteers, prayer leaders, and members of important committees and task forces. But perhaps the largest way that our youth traditionally serve and learn within our parish is in our acolyte corps, led by our amazing acolyte master, Mr. Tim Highland. We haven't seen our acolytes in quite a while, and we miss them probably far more than they know. So I want to take a few minutes now to honor them for their service to our parish and hear a little bit about what our acolytes have been up to during this very unordinary, ordinary time. And to do this, I'll read you words written by our acolyte master, Mr. Highland. All Saints is home to a fantastic, wonderful, amazing group of youth, the All Saints Acolyte Corps. Year after year, this group of caring young people serves with dedication to make sure our common worship is uplifting, beautiful, and runs with precision. They assist the clergy and provide examples for the congregation. They also learn about liturgy and spiritual community under the watchful eyes of their homegrown leadership, the head acolytes. But what about now, when there is an inability to worship together in church due to the pandemic? The Acolyte Corps has continued to learn and grow together. Every week, the Acolytes worship virtually with their families and the All Saints community. Every week, a brief reflection and discussion regarding the Gospel is sent to each Acolyte. The reflection seeks to bring scripture lessons into the context of today's world and what we all face, especially youth. Some reflections acknowledge that the world we live in is not always easy to understand, but that Jesus shows us how to live in the light and in love. Often acolytes share their comments on the reflection. They may not be serving with each other every Sunday, but they are receiving and thinking in common about the biblical teachings of the week. More fun, or maybe not, is the weekly quiz or challenge questions. The acolytes are sent a question each week to see if they can provide the right answer. The questions can be anything from review questions about acolyte roles or duties to scavenger hunt type questions. For example, where at All Saints would you find a Christ the King cross? Acolytes send back answers to these questions, sometimes because they know them already, and sometimes after they have researched the topic. Responses from acolytes are acknowledged and the best and first correct answers are recognized. Sometimes we even hear from parents who want to know the answers too. The responses from our amazing acolytes are insightful and show spiritual growth. One acolyte really liked the parable about the kingdom of God being like a treasure hidden in the field. For him, being faithful is something that takes work, like finding the treasure, but is something to be shared once found and not hidden. Another acolyte discussed one of the roles of an acolyte as participating deeply in the celebration of who we are as a Christian community and to be a leader and example for others to help them in worship and faith. A recent question about our upcoming rector search revealed amazing thought by our youth of what qualities and skills we should be looking for in our new rector. One acolyte commented, 
The biggest quality needed by our next rector is passion, a striving to always improve and move our community forward in faith. The biggest skill needed is communication, because we have a large congregation with different views and the rector needs to bring people together. The All Saints Acolyte Corps is eagerly awaiting the time when we can all gather together for worship in the Church. But for right now, while the Albs remain hung in the Acolyte Sacristy with care, the Acolytes are still sharing with each other in thought, spiritual reflection, and prayer among themselves and for our community. And now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you. Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, for you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen.
And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for us, the beloved people of God. Almighty God, you promised through our Lord Jesus Christ that where two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. I ask you to be in the midst of us now, though we are far apart, and to bind us together through the power of your Holy Spirit. In that one Spirit, we were all baptized into one body, and though we cannot break bread together in person, we know that we are one body, because we have all shared in the one bread. And though I alone receive this sacrament today, because we are one body in Christ, I pray that all those gathered in the Spirit into this community may receive it through me. This I ask not only on behalf of those gathered at this moment, but also on behalf of those who will be with us in the Spirit at the time they hear these words. Just as you, Father, are in the Son, and he in you, so may they also be in you, and Christ in them, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.